Senator Martin Golden, thanks very much for joining us. It's good to see you. Thank you very much, Liz. So give us the uh, overview exactly. You believe that you are going to be in the majority come January 1st. Uh, yes. We had, we done homework. We had a model which we worked off of. The model was a good model. Uh, we had a couple of surprises that uh, hit us, and uh, we had a couple of surprises that hit them. I believe at the end of the day, though, we're going to have 33 seats. We will be in the majority. And that's going to happen rather quickly. It's not going to be one of these long, drawn-out, dragged-out fights into December and January. Uh, you will know relatively soon uh, where some of these wins are and uh, how successful they were. You know, it's interesting. When you, when you talk about some surprises, I mean, you actually won races, or you, you appear to be poised to win races that you weren't supposed to win. Correct. And you lost races that perhaps you weren't supposed to lose. That, uh, for example, I'm thinking of Queen Senator Frank Padovan. He uh, is a veteran of the chamber. He had Mayor Bloomberg's support, and yet he lost to Tony Avella. We were surprised that Frank lost. Uh, Frank was a great asset to the uh, conference, a good man and a hard worker. You wouldn't find a harder uh, uh, a ethics, uh, work ethics than uh, Frank had. So why, though? I mean, why do you think that happened? I believe that the model we worked off, we did not expect to see the, uh, n the inflated numbers. They went uh, uh, after Frank on uh, a number of issues that we feel that uh, uh, they were disingenuous on. And uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, the number of voters that came out surpassed uh, the model that we had worked off of. We were surprised by Scott Van der Hoff, but the areas where we were, uh, where we won, where people thought we wouldn't win, we had that in our model. We were working those seats. Those seats were part of our model. Uh, so we had a plan, and uh, all the seats that came in, there's no surprises to us here. These are all seats that we worked. Okay, but what do, to what do you owe, do you think that you owe a potential victory, say, in Nassau County with Craig Johnson? That's somebody that Dean Skelos, the minority leader, has been trying to get rid of for quite some time. That was a seat that Mike Balboni had, actually, that Elliot Spitzer came in and plucked him out for an administration job, and you guys have been trying to get it back ever since, and you haven't been able to. Well, I think it's the people. I think they trusted the, the Democrats with the, uh, the House. They gave them the House two years ago. And uh, they had a mantle, they thought they had a mandate to go out there and to do the people's business. Their uh, mandate was different than that of the public. Uh, raising $16 billion in somewhere the two worst years since the Great Depression, they raised $16 billion in taxes and fees. What message were you sending to people? An MTA tax into Long Island, and into Hudson Valley. What were you telling the people? Real estate taxes going up, you spending going up. You think it's this, though, up. and not local, for example, not local politics. Nassau County went Republican, back to the Republicans in 2009, a surprise loss of Tom Swasey, the, the Democratic County Executive. Westchester County, uh, again, a surprise loss of Andy Spano, the Democratic County Executive, to Rob Astorino. For the same reasons. No jobs, no rebound in the economy, stimulus wasted, stimulus money, cash for clunkers. They could have put that money into the states. We could have put money into the World Trade Center, Atlantic Yards, Jacob Javits, Moynihan, Second Avenue Line, Destiny in upstate New York. We would have created 100,000 okay. jobs. We would but have created a billion case, dollars in economic then, activity. Then why didn't any of the statewides work for you? Because of Carl Palladino? Well, Carl Palladino, obviously, we had uh, uh, a great showing for uh, the governor, Governor Cuomo, Governor-elect Cuomo. And that obviously did hurt, uh, we believe, for the top of the ticket. Uh, we had two great guys, Dan Donovan and uh, Harry Wilson. I mean, you couldn't find better guys. You know, they good, uh, solid uh, um, on the issues, uh, less government, uh, less spending, uh, less corruption, uh, uh, put a stamp and, and, and put out and close corruption here in the state of New York, uh, go after the authorities, uh, make people accountable. This is the type of people that you wanted in government. And it's unfortunate. Well, then, do you think you should have separated yourselves as a conference from Carl Palladino to more than you did? Dean Skelos was the first person on primary night to put out a statement congratulating Carl Palladino on his win. Well, you know, the, there are some things that, unfortunately, uh, you know, Palladino was our choice as a party, so we stayed with our party choice, um, whether right or wrong, and we suffered those consequences. Uh, the Andrew Como obviously uh, did extremely well, and uh, he uh, he conquered the uh, the day. And uh, we're looking to work with uh, Andrew. I think he needs a partner, the governor elect, and I think we want to be his partner. We want to stop the uh, spending. We want to stop the taxes. We obviously want to do exactly what he would said last night, and that was balance your checkbook the way you would do it at home. And that's what we want to do. Get rid of the, you know, cut some of these authorities out. 
uh, cut some of these taxing agents that you have across 10,000 taxing agents across the state of New York. You've got to reduce the size of government, you've got to reduce agencies, and you've got to start to stop the spending. Sir, so you need a property tax cap and you need a spending okay, cap. Okay, but let, let me ask you this then. Do you think that Andrew Cuomo wanted the Senate to flip back to the Republicans? Because there has been some speculation that he did, so he could have a foil and it would be easier for him to govern, particularly with the fiscally conservative platform that you're talking about here. Well, I believe that we will work very, very closely with uh, Andrew Cuomo. I think Andrew Cuomo will be uh, good for the state of New York. He stays on message, stays on, on the principles of less government, uh, less taxes, um, less taxing agents, less spending. Uh, and creating jobs. The biggest thing we got to do here is create jobs. So the answer to your question, uh, I'm not going to uh, uh, try to presume what uh, was behind uh, uh, Mr. Cuomo's thoughts, the governor, on uh, which party should have won. But I will tell you, uh, we will show going forward that we are the best party for not only the governor of the state of New York, but for the taxpayers of this great state. Okay, let me ask you though, uh, just getting back to the races for a second, you've got this uh, three-way race up in Buffalo. It's for uh, Bill Stokowski's seat. And it looks, uh, I'm sorry, pardon me, Antoine Thompson versus Mark Grisanti. That's that's the race that is uh, hanging in the balance. He's actually, Grisanti, your, your candidate, quote unquote, is actually a Democrat who two years ago tried to primary Antoine Thompson and failed to unseat him. Has he told you that he will, he ran on the Republican line, will he in fact conference with the Republicans? The answer is yes. And Senator Skelos has put out a message uh, this afternoon uh, asking uh, Antoine to uh, step down, step aside, uh, don't continue this uh, lawsuit. Uh, he's, uh, we are up 400 uh, uh, votes in that, uh, in that seat, so uh, it's, he's not going to be able to overcome that with paper. So it's time to move on. It's time for the state uh, to get managed and to have a party that's in control so that we can go to Albany, uh, pass some of the legislation that's needed to get done for this year and get ready to work next year with this governor and with the assembly, which will is going to be difficult. It, uh, will Dean Skelos be the leader? Dean Scullis has been a good manager. Uh, Tommy Lip is a great manager. He managed the campaign. Um, Dean managed uh, as the majority leader. The <laughs> you get a little ahead of leader, yourself there, Senator. <laughs> the to be majority leader. Um, and I think he will be, yes. So, so do you expect that he might be challenged? Because, for example, George Maziar's from Buffalo had spoken of a possible interest in that position. Uh, George Maziar has been, and we talk to George on a regular basis. George is part of the team. This is a team effort. We couldn't have taken uh, Antoine uh, Thompson out without working as a team. George Maziar played a significant role in that, so he's part of this team, and that's how you get and govern here in the state of New York, by having a team, working across party lines, and delivering for the people of the state, and that's what we're going to do. Will you bring gay marriage back to the floor? I have no idea. That's not a call for me. What about redistricting? You guys pledged that you'd do it. I got to tell you right now, I think redistricting should should definitely be fair and open. And it, yes, I'm one of those guys that believes in redistricting. We should have a fair and open process versus that of Malcolm. Malcolm Smith turned around and said he would redistrict us into, what was the word? Oblivion, Oblivion I believe, was okay. the word, yep. Okay, that's real fair. <laughs> okay, so I think whatever we come up with, I believe uh, I'm 100 percent behind the fair and open process, and I would glad to be part of it. Well, Senator Martin Golden, it is always good to see you, and uh, we will be seeing you in Albany in January, either in the majority or in the minority. By then, hopefully, we'll know. We'll be in a majority, I guarantee you, with 33 seats. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you.